Welcome back from break, family. I hope that everybody's refreshed. Let's just finish up strong today's class. Um, we have about 40 minutes. So let's just continue talking about how do we handle measurements when we're dealing with mathematical operations. Now we're going to move on to multiplication and division. So in order to deal with multiplication and division, if we have measurements, understand that your final answer is going to be written so that it has the same number of significant figures as the measurements with the fewest significant figures. I know that some of you will be like, okay, but why in addition and subtraction is decimal places and here is sig figs? Hey, these are the rules that, have, that were determined and it mostly comes from the field of analytical chemistry. And in analytical chemistry is one of those disciplines in chemistry in which numbers are very important. And up, upon, you know, doing research and experimentation, they saw that this is the best strategy to handle measurements in the first part of today's class. We saw how you handle addition and subtraction, but in the multiplication and division, these are the rules. So let's say that, for example, we are taking two measured numbers, as you can see here, 24.66 centimeters. We are multiplying it by the measurement 0 0.35 centimeters, okay? When we take those two numbers and we put them in the calculator, you can see that the calculator display is 8.631, but because the operation here specifically is, multiplication, I need to look at the number of significant figures in my measurements. So here we have, I, give me a moment, uh, too large, too large. This has four significant figures. This has two significant figures. What's directing that I'm looking at sig figs is this, my operation. That's why I'm looking at sig figs, because I'm multiplying. So I take that value 8.631, and then I round it to two significant figures because that's the fewest significant uh, digits that I have in a measurement. So my final answer is 8.6. So right now let's practice when we are doing just multiplication and just division. So going back to slide 16, I want you guys to take a moment and let's do problems three and four. So at this time, let's do problems three and four. We're going to do um, similarly, the same way to illustrate um, the result. I have calculator display and final answer. For the exam, I just want the final answer. I don't need the calculator display. If it's in a multiple choice question, you may see the calculator display, but understand that overall you want the final answer overall when you're doing mathematical operations.
One more minute. Great question in the chat. Um, when I want you guys to show your work, it's gonna be stated in the instructions. And if I give you problems that are going to be like conversion factors, which is the topic that we are dealing with after, um, for those, I want you guys to show your work just in case if you do an oopsie, meaning that you move the decimal place, you enter something wrong in the calculator. That's when I want you to show your work. Uh, when it comes to this course, it's important that you show your work, especially because later in this chapter, which most likely we're gonna get to that concept at the end of today, but most likely by next week on Tuesday, um, when we learn how to do dosage, I need you guys to actually write down how to do the problem. So you guys have that mental note of like, if I'm trying to determine how much medicine I, I need to give my patient, this is the process of how I do it. Um, I always say in exams, if you, uh, you will be assigned full credit for a question if you show your work. Because if you don't show your work and you give me the wrong answer, then I will not give you any credit. So be mindful about that. In an exam, I, you will have ample time to show your work on paper. And hey, partial credit is better than no credit. So, okay, let's go over number three and number four. So when it comes to uh, number three, we're doing multiplication. So in multiplication, I'm going to multiply 6.2 times 4.114. My calculator display shows 25.5068. When I look at the digits that I'm working with, this one has two sig figs. This one has four sig figs. So my final answer needs to be rounded to two sig figs, okay? So when it comes to this, what's the final answer? Great job. 26. In the next one, we are dividing. We have 7.331 divided by 12.42. My calculator, this, this one is really long. I'm going to write it in. This is 0 0.590257649. When I look at the digits that I have, both have four sig figs. So that means that I'm going to round to four sig figs. And when I do that, what number do I get? Mm-hmm, great job. 0 0.5903. There was a comment in the chat. If you write 26.0, would that be correct? The answer is no because 26.0 has three significant figures. That zero after the six 
is written after a decimal place and it is placed after a non-zero digit, that zero will be significant. So 26.0 is not the correct answer. Questions about multiplication and division just by themselves. Go ahead, Paris. So basically with multiplication, when you have the significant figures, you are rounding to the significant figures. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. But when addition and subtract subtraction, you're just doing the decimal points. If I got that right. Yes, you're correct. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on that. So there's a question um, about why can there be a decimal point on number three? You can write the decimal place after the six, but there cannot be a zero after it. If you have 26 decimal place in a way that's kind of like redundant, because remember that when it comes to significant figures, having non-zero digits, um are non-zero days so both of them are significant and if you write let's say if you write the decimal place here you can write it it's not necessary now the zero after that one um then you cannot write so a zero after that decimal place that i wrote 26 that's not okay that Decimal place that I wrote in is redundant. You already have two digits that are significant. So it's not necessary. Um, great question in the chat. What about the zero uh, on question four? Is it necessary? Let me be honest, and this is my take on this subject. If you want to write the zero, before that decimal place and you have a small number, please do. If you don't want to write the zero, meaning that you wrote on paper at home, decimal place 5903, that is also okay with me. The reason why you will see me write that zero is just because of my training. I have gotten burned as an undergrad because my professors used to be strict about having that zero before the decimal place. So it kind of has been ingrained in my brain to put it there. But as you see, if you write it, like I wrote the answer or like the one that I have on the side, please just make sure that the decimal place is there. Let me see, I have a couple questions on the chat. Let me go back to it so I can get people. So Damaris, does that answer your question? No problem. Okay, there were a couple more questions here. Let me see, let me go back. Okay, there was a question about how many six figs you round for the final answer. It depends on your measurements. So that's why you saw that on number three, I put two six figs and four six figs. Remember that we're multiplying, so I need to count the six figs. That's why you saw me that I intentionally wrote decimal places on problems one and two, because we're looking at decimal places since my operations are addition and subtraction. So... In number three, for example, two sig figs and four sig figs, I need to round to two sig figs because that's my measurement that has the lowest resolution, meaning two sig figs. On problem four, because both of them has four sig figs, I need to round to four sig figs. I hope that that answers the question. Good, good. Let me see. Question three, what? Okay, we're good there. Awesome. Any other questions on when we are dealing with just addition and uh, just uh, subtraction, just multiplication, just division?
Put a one in the chat if you feel a little bit better about this. Make sure that you practice, family. It's always practice, practice, practice. I cannot stress that enough. The way that we conquer this mountain is going to be by practicing, okay? Now, there is a number of students. That's where I'm moving now uh, to five and six. So there is a number of students that are in my class that at times they may have to take other chemistry courses, uh, meaning that they have to take, you know, maybe the full year or at least one semester of general chemistry, which at Palomar College, that's chemistry 110. Uh, and it depends. So I want to illustrate problems five and six which is I have multiple operations. How do I handle six figs when I have something like this, okay? So first of all, how we handle five and six is that we have to first follow PEMDAS rules. PEMDAS rules are going to be the rules that determine the order of operation. Okay? P is parentheses. E is exponents. M is multiplication. D is division. A is addition. S is subtraction. So, in a problem like this, and understand that in this course, I only give you guys something inside of the parentheses and something outside of the parentheses. We don't do more complex math than this, okay? When you are doing problems in which you have a parentheses and you have something outside of the parentheses, according to PEMDAS rules, the first thing that you do is that you handle the digits inside of the parentheses. So in problem five, we have an operation inside of parentheses, and then we have one outside of the parentheses. So let me just rewrite um, the problem, which I'm just going to copy it and paste it by the magic of having an iPad. Um, with this, I need to give a mental note and tell myself, okay, According to PEMDAS rules, the first thing that I'm going to do is the parentheses. So I'm going to take those numbers and I'm going to add them. 25.5285 plus 22.14. Okay. For the students that are following and doing these operations, I hope that out of the parentheses, you guys got 44.6685. Just put a one in the chat. If you did that addition and you got those digits. Good. Then those digits, I'm going to divide by 4.266. So I take all of those numbers and I divide by 4.266. I get a large um, calculator display, 10.4708175, okay? If you were doing this, uh, and put a two in the chat if that's what you got in terms of a, a, um, calculator display for the division. Great. You cannot say, oh, I took all of these measurements. First, I have to add these, and then I have to divide that, and I'm going to take all those numbers. All these numbers are basically saying that 
if you report that in a scientific journal, you're saying that your resolution is amazing. Look at all those digits there. And that, unless you have super, you know, instruments that have a lot of resolution, then maybe you could get those numbers. The reality is that if I'm taking measurements, I need to make sure that the resolution of my instruments are taking, uh, you're taking them into account. So in a case that you take measurements, you add them and then you divide them. You have to tell yourself, well, even though I have that large ca um, calculator display, I need to little by little apply my rules for sig figs, okay? So coming out of the parentheses, no, I do not divide. I take my whole numbers, not yet. Because if you round too early, you may be losing resolution. You'll be doing an underestimation. So I take all of my numbers. So coming out of the parentheses, since I'm doing decimal places, okay, because I'm adding, what is the fewest decimal places that I have there? So if I was, if I was to round, if I was to round, I have to take into account that this has four decimal places. This has two decimal places. So technically, if I was to round, I will only be looking at these digits. Are we good so far? If I was given just what is the parentheses and I needed to determine that, I will only be looking at those four digits, right? Because that's up to the second decimal place. Put a one in the chat if that makes sense so far. Coming out of the parentheses, even though I have all those numbers, and I'm going to use all of those numbers, technically I'm only underlining those first four digits. Okay. Now, if I compare the digits that I underlined, okay, so these digits that I underlined to these digits that I have here. The next operation that I'm doing is division. And since I'm doing division, I'll be looking at six figs. Both of these things that I underline now in red, which is because of this operation, then I'm only looking at these, even though I'm using all of the numbers, okay? Then I will say, well, this has four six figs. And this is four six figs. My last operation is what's going to determine what I'm going to do with this value, which is that I'm going to round to four six figs because that's my last operation. Okay. Now, for those students that are like, but why are you using that 44.6685? Okay, why is it that you do not uh, round it to 44.67 and then you continue? When it comes to research, these are rules that have already been determined that when you have multiple operations, and again, in this course, you guys are not going to be doing these often because you're not gonna be doing multiple, multiple, multiple operations. This is just an application for those students that may have to take multiple measurements in the future in other chemistry classes, and they're confronted with these problems. In this class, you guys will see that in one uh, in lab 1B, we are not going to be encountering this uh, that much, or at all, to be honest with you. So in this case, I need to take all those digits and round to total four six figs, so my final answer here is 10.47. That's correct. Yes. It's because of the resolution thing. Go ahead, John. All right. So my question is, um, after we add those two measurements, we do not um, round to the two decimal points yet, correct? 
exactly. Okay, just to avoid like any mistakes. It's mainly because you could over again. All of the application of these is always the laboratory. It's always the laboratory. So you don't want to round too early because it could affect um, the numbers at the end. And at least in the disciplines that I was trained in, which include organic chemistry, biochemistry, chemical biology, all of these numbers do not affect it the data in my years that I train as a researcher. But it is my understanding that in other disciplines like physical chemistry, like analytical chemistry, over um, rounding or rounding too early could affect the results in their research. So from my experience, doing data with you know problems like number five and also number six, at least I didn't encounter. Sounds There's good. Another- no Thank problem. You. There's another question. What if the smallest display was one, but you need four six figs? Riley, I don't understand your question. Because overall, when we are doing these, we are going one step at a time. I deal with my parentheses and then I deal with my next operation. So as long as you you can take this, okay, I see. The reason why I wrote four sig figs is because in the parentheses, okay, I have digits that if I was to apply the sig fig rule for them, I will only look up to the six. But in practice, in science, you use all of the digits. So that's why at least I tell students, I underline the digits that I pay attention and then I utilize all of them, but I underline the ones that I have to pay attention because in the next operation, that's what I need to compare to the last operation that I have. Professor? Yes, go ahead. Sorry, Uh, if instead of 22.14, you had 22, would that change how many significant figures you round the final answer to? Um, Yeah, because if it was 22, then out of the parentheses, it will be whole number. So if it was a whole number, so let's say that it was only 22, right? Then that means that that blue line will stop at the whole number and that's only two sig figs. I know I'm verbalizing this, and for my students that are visual learners, I'm not writing, but hold on tight, you guys. Um, So there's a question in the chat about, okay, why decimal places and sig figs? As we just discussed, if I'm adding or subtracting, how I determine what are the, the digits that carry meaning is via decimal places. Four, multiplication and division, how I determine which ones are the digits that carry meaning is going to be via looking at sig figs. That's just the basic rules for operation. In this problem, we have a combination. We have something in parentheses, and I'm going to do an operation in a parentheses, and that operation has a a particular um, mathematical operation. In in this case, it's addition. And then outside, I have another one. So I need to um, basically take them and then keep in mind what's, what's happening in the parentheses and what's outside of the parentheses. So let's think of an analogy. This is kind of like, let's say you are raised at home by your family and your family composition. And at home, you learn some tools. When you come to us at college, right? So home is the parentheses. You're bringing with you what you have at home, but you're now in a new stage. So 
at home will be like what's happening in the parentheses, the new place that you're bringing in the rules that you had in that parentheses, okay, is going to be in a new situation. So that's why outside of the parentheses, we need to say, okay, but now that I'm in a new place, there's going to be some new rules, okay? So understand that even though you can take your equation, plug it in, okay? Then that's how you determine the final answer. I think let's do problem six. Again, this, I'm just illustrating it because I know that there's some students that this is going to happen to them. We don't see problems like this until later in the semester. So let me just check. There was a question at the end. Okay, so let me just redo number five with just having a, the digit 22. Let's say that I have, give me a moment. Let me erase this. Let's say that we had this, okay? Similar problem, we don't have a decimal place. Let me just erase it. Let me put it in the calculator. So this portion of my equation, 22.5285 plus 22. This is going to be 44.5285. I'm going to divide it by 4.266. This gives me an answer of 10.437998. Okay. Now, if I'm coming out of the parentheses, let's put in the chat. What do I look at? Sig figs or decimal places? Out of the parentheses. I'm trying to see why there's SF. If I'm adding, I, I let me just go back to the slide. Addition and subtraction, do I look at sig figs or decimal places? It's right there on the slides. So as I do the operation in the parentheses, great, let's fix that. Oh, okay, no problem, sorry. Just the way that worded it was a little confusing. So the operation inside of the parentheses, the result of that, we're going to look at decimal places. We can't agree with that. Put a one in the chat, if that makes sense. The result that is coming from the operation in the parentheses is decimal places. Great. So when I look at these digits, how many decimal places do I have in the measurement 22.5285? How many decimal places? Great, this has four decimal places. What about in the digit 22? Excellent job. We have zero decimal places. So if I have to underline digits, let's put the, um, the digits that I'm going to underline as the result of applying 
the rule for the operation addition coming out of the parentheses. What will be the digits that I underline? Let's put it in the chat. I see a lot of correct answers. Thank you so much, you guys. Yes. 44. Put a two in the chat if so far this makes sense. Why I underline 44. So again, your home, what is in the parentheses? You were raised there. You have some tools, not all of them, okay? Because remember that when you're coming out of a place, let's say from a home, you bring all of your experiences, right? But in this new stage, which when we apply it to an equation, it's going to be, hey, I'm in a new space. Now I'm going to divide. But I'm only going to be looking at what I underline, even though I'm carrying all the numbers. Okay? So when I do my second line to look at the digits, I have to say, okay, I'm going to do an extra line right below that one, because that's the only thing that in a way is going to count, but we are not going to round. And then in the next one, in this new stage, these digits are bringing everything they have. Let me just do a few more markings. Remember that this is because it's coming from these digits and this is that what wing. So that's why it's a whole number, no decimal places. So my last operation says division. And when I'm dividing, okay, so that second part, what I mean by that is this portion. Am I looking at rounding? to decimal places, decimal places as my final answer, or because division is my last operation, I need to look at six figs as my rounding. Great Perfect. job, you guys. We are going to look at six figs. If I compare my lines where you see the green and the purple, this is two six figs. Where you see the line in purple, this is four six figs. So I'm rounding to how many six figs? Let's put it in the chat. Exactly. Only two. So my final answer for a problem like this that has been shown like this is going to be. 10 decimal place and the reason why that decimal place has to be there is to give significance to that zero because if you write 10 this is only one significant figure you could also use scientific notation and you and say 1.0 uh, times 10 to the one that's that could be also an answer but you shall not write just 10 as your final answer. It has to be 10 decimal place because you need two sig figs as your final answer. Next week I have office hours. If this is a topic that students still have problems with, please make sure that you come to office hours. Go ahead, Lucas. <laughs> Sorry, um, for the, so does the, um, you mentioned the, the green line was showing, uh, for, uh, the amount of, uh, decimal places, but we don't actually care about that for this kind of problem, right? Because we hold on to all the decimal, all the, um, decimal places until the end. And then at the end, we look at significant figures, right? You could see it that way. Okay. Thank you. That's another way to see it. So I only have about seven minutes. I want to at least introduce to you guys two concepts that we are going to explore in detail um, next week on Tuesday, okay? The first concept is the idea of 
prefixes and equalities. Prefixes, as you can see by definition, are a special feature that has been utilized in the SI system and the metric system. This is placed in front of any unit and its purpose is to increase that unit in size or decrease that unit in, in size. Now, you can see in the left side of the slide that we have um, specific prefixes that are utilized to make a uh, specific measurement into a smaller unit. For example, we have milli, M-I-L-L-I, -L -L -I. Uh, this is a milligram, and then we have microgram. When it comes to microgram, please uh, make sure that you know that micrograms can be illustrated specifically by using this. I, I thought it was in the highlighter. Let me start that again. The microgram, so the micro abbreviation can be this U looking symbol or another way to write it is MC. Both of them mean the, um, the prefix micro. And for mili, the abbreviation for it is just a small case M. Now, which one do you guys need to know? In this course, you need to know the ones that are summarized in table 2.4. So let me just write a note right here. Need to know these prefixes. for exam one. There's an extensive list of prefixes, but from the ones that make a unit of measurement larger, you guys are responsible for knowing tera, giga, mega, and kilo. And you can see them here. Terra, Giga, Mega, and Kilo. And you guys may have heard of these before. Like, it's very common nowadays to buy hard drives that have terabytes of space that you can uh, store. So in computers, you can already see terabytes. Um, the RAM of a computer, it's uh, already given in Giga phones. At times, you can get gigabytes of space um, in your phone. Maybe you have heard the term of mega or like recently, right? This summer, somebody won mega millions and they are ultra, ultra rich. Um, kilo, like in kilometers. So for example, if you decide to take a hobby and you're like, you know what? I'm going to run a 5K. What that means is, you're looking at kilometers. From the prefixes that make the, the units of measurement small, you guys are only responsible for knowing deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, pico. There are units of measurements that are smaller than that, but understand that those are the only ones that you guys are responsible for knowing. So why is it that we need to learn these prefixes and you know, how do we use them overall? Well, because these prefixes are utilized in equalities. And equalities are going to be when you have two different units that describe the same measured amount, okay? When it comes to equalities and which ones are the ones that you guys are responsible for knowing in this class, Understand that there's going to be equalities that are um, present specifically in the metric system. So we're comparing two measurements in the metric system. So for example, one meter equals 1,000 millimeters. That is a metric to metric uh, comparison. 
we can have things that are in U.S. units. And in U.S. units, we can see that one pound equals 16 ounces. We can also have uh, comparisons that are metric and U.S. units. So we can see this metric U.S. unit comparison. that 2.20 pounds equals one kilogram. Let me specify, because I have a number of my students here that are going to be going into the field of nursing. This one is important in nursing. You should memorize it and know that one kilogram is 2.20 pounds. Specifically because one of the things, and we are going to uh, see some of this next week on Tuesday, is that many of the medications that you need to deliver to patients, the units for the dosage is in kilograms per the milligrams of medication. But your patient's body mass, so the mass, is given in pounds, but then you have to make sure that you know what does that correspond in kilo. So this one is very important in nursing. One last thing before um, I let you guys go, when it comes to the exam, the ones that I provide specifically, so let me just circle this so you guys have an idea about it. These two columns, are given in the exam. I do not give you the metric to metric conversion, but next week on Tuesday, I will show you how to derive it, okay? So this is all for today. Thank you guys so much for coming. I hope I get to see you face to face um on tuesday have a great weekend and for my thursday people remember we're gonna meet here at eleven ten.